Welcome everyone, those of you who are with us ahead of the scheduled 8 o'clock kickoff time. Well, of course, we never get underway right on the dot. Hope you're well. How has your week been so far? Of course, uh, disappointment last night with the result, but uh, we will bounce back. Don't worry. As James has said a number of times, there will be blips along the way, bumps in the road. And it's all about how you come back from them, so uh, I wouldn't get too concerned at this stage by a long way. So uh, you'll see the pin code there, 87181. And don't forget to press your finger at the top of the virtual keypad. So while we're waiting, I'll just tell you about an event which is coming up. And that's next Monday night. Still places available, March the 22nd, next Monday night, 7 o'clock online, just £10. That's the Sparrights Legends reunion. The four characters there, Tony Bryan, Steve Williams, Chris Marples, Dave Caldwell. And we had, uh, well, let's say a planning meeting the other night. Monday night it was, yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, good fun. It will be very entertaining and the money we'll be raising will be going to the Community Trust Football for Life mental health team. So please do support that. Promises to be a lot of fun. You don't have to actually take part. You can just go online and uh, listen to everybody else ask asking questions and listen to the banter between that quartet. It will be a lot of fun. It's guaranteed. So uh, I would highly recommend you uh, join in. It would be great to receive your support for that one. As I say, even if you just want to watch rather than ask any questions, or you could ask questions via a message, you could message on the night or send an email and I'll gladly ask them. So you don't have to uh, take part and ask questions. It's important to point that out. And also we'll be having a random draw for two VIP tickets for the first match back for spectators at the Technique Stadium. So that will be fantastic. And money can't buy prize so two people will be guaranteed to uh, go to that first match at the technique stadium when supporters are allowed back all the details are on the website but so we return to the quiz for tonight 87181 is the pin code and then press the finger at the top of the virtual keypad i'll uh, get an early thanks in to phil tooley who has ever has come up with uh, 20 great questions all about the Spyrites. No particular theme this week. Sometimes we have a theme, but not this week. It's general Spyrites questions. And the winner will go into a prize draw at the end of the month. And uh, we've got these great prints, as you can see on there. Uh, fantastic prints both of uh, Saltergate and of the Technique Stadium. So um, thanks very much for uh, providing those. You can see the details at the top, Papilios Creative. I will put a link on the website as well so people can buy from there. But uh, the winner of tonight's quiz will go into a draw with the other winners when we haven't had a designated prize that week. And we'll have prize draw to see who wins a choice of prints either saltergate or the technique stadium well done to kevin wag who came along and chose a print last week kevin a dedicated quizzer who really does enjoy taking part along with other members of his family as well so the pin code 87181 is uh, the number to put in on your buzzerpad.com virtual keypad and then press the finger at the top of the screen. While we're talking about other quizzes, we have uh, this weekend on Sunday from 5pm, the fun family quiz, all sorts of trivia. And also I've been talking to somebody today, a comedy legend, about doing a quiz to uh, raise money and awareness for a charity I'm involved with. So that will be a paid quiz, but some great prizes some uh, fantastic prizes that we'll have in that quiz and it will be a comedy quiz as well so the 
Comedy legend in question will be hosting the quiz. And we'll have first, second and third prizes that night, as well as a random draw at the halfway stage as we do now. We have the uh, Wheel of Fortune, so there'll be a chance for whoever's in the top 20 probably will go into that Wheel of Fortune to win a random prize. So uh, I'll bring in more details on that. But I've had a very generous offer of a three-night break in North Yorkshire as the uh, main prize that's worth I'm told around 500 pounds so a very generous offer so that will be the keynote prize in that quiz all the details to be announced in due course so 87181 is the pin code and then press the finger and you'll be registered for tonight's quiz also Quizzes galore at the moment because we'll be having a quiz to raise money for the Spyrites Academy. That's a week on Thursday. And that will be via Zoom. And all the details will be on the club website tomorrow. So we're going to put together, well we have put together, a football quiz. Well, Spyrites questions in there as well, but general football. And uh, as I say, money will be used to... Uh, from that to um, put into the academy so your support once again would be very much appreciated same format as we have here the multiple choice with the virtual keypad that's for the Bar Rights Academy we're nearly at the 50 mark and it's only just a few minutes past 8 so I don't think we're rushing to get underway so while we're waiting just a message I've had earlier and this is uh, had a birthday taking place tomorrow and this is Lauren Speed works at the hub and she's a steward at the matches and she's 22 tomorrow so Lauren's dad has asked if we can wish her all the best for tomorrow that's also happy birthday from the Edge family so Zoe has been in touch to send on her best wishes so I'll relay those to uh, Lauren Speed. Hope you have a great birthday, Lauren. I hope you enjoy the quiz tonight. Who knows? You may just get picked out a random prize because that's what happened with Kevin Wagg the other week. It was his 50th. And uh, just around that, I think it was the following quiz. He won in the prize draw for being one of the winners of the previous month. So, I mean, how these things work, but... Uh, Hope you have a good birthday tomorrow. But we are at the 50 mark now. 87181 is the pin code. And then press the finger at the top of your virtual keypad. I think we'll give it a couple of minutes and then we'll get underway. 87181. Press the finger at the top of your virtual keypad. Just uh a note for anybody playing for the first time, I know we get a lot of people re repeat quizzes, play every week. Thank you for your support, but we occasionally get a, a new starter. So just to tell you that it is against the clock, the quicker you answer, the more points you stand to gain. And once you've pressed your selection, there's no turning back. You can't change your answer. It will show that it's registered on your keypad and it'll also tell you by way of a sound effect and also a cross or a tick when the time is up, whether you are right or wrong. It'll also show you your place on the leaderboard, although I'll show on the screen as well from time to time just where you are or particularly who's at the top of the leaderboard. So try and space that out so we're not constantly checking it, but good to see who's up there. The back headers. The defending champion from last week. Also, Pilsley franchise went close. And Moss CFC, I believe, was third. So that was the top three, but the back head is the defending champion. Also, well, Sparrow's Police be a contender, done well in the uh, recent quizzes and won the Mother's Day quiz at the weekend. So we're at six minutes past eight, so I'll give a final call. 
That'll give me a chance to just get a quick drink of tea just for a moment before we get underway. So 87181 and then press the finger at the top of the virtual keypad. Okay, so T quickly consumed. Now up to 54. So final call then, 87181. And press the finger on your virtual keypad. And we'll get underway with tonight's quiz. Always like to see that screen come on that says that everything's working. So let's take a look and see who we've got with us tonight. Play on playoffs, slow connection, Volodymyr, they're the first two to sign in, then Kevin Wag, Dave Med, who picked up a bottle of wine courtesy of uh, Scavelli last night when we had the uh, collections for the food, the takeaway food from the reception, and uh, Dave collected his bottle of wine, so I hope you're going to enjoy that if you've not already opened it, Dave. Uh, Glee team as well, regular player number one, Spire, Reggie for POTY, the backheaders, defending champions, I say, Rabbit Dave and the Dart. That's the first 10 to sign in. So let's uh, see who else we've got here. Yep, quite a few familiar names there. Quickly go through those. So sure we'll be having a look. We go along at the leaderboard, so let's get underway then with tonight's quiz. So which of these Chessville managers picked up the fewest league points in their opening 15 games in charge? Roy McFarlane, Gary Caldwell, Jack Lester or Dean Saunders? Remember as quickly as you can. McFarlane, Caldwell, Lester or Saunders as the... Uh, one amongst those who picked up the fewest league points in their opening 15 games in charge. And less than half the time now remains, just Johnny Wings yet to answer. Make sure, Johnny, that your stream is right to the end on YouTube. If you're lagging behind a little, you will lose some precious time. So it might well be that you're just a little behind. And the answer is Roy McFarland. Nine points. Gary Caldwell, 12. Uh, we also see Jack Lester with 16. Dean Saunders with 20. So, A, Roy McFarland. And the second most popular answer, 19. So, let's take a look then, as we usually do, at the leaderboard after the first question. West Bar Spyrite, multiple winner. Straight in there with maximum points. Dan in second. Rockwell Sparites in third, and uh, Hills of Franchise getting off to a good start as well in fifth place, virtually getting maximum points. And to question two. So the Oval Town Keeper in the Sparites' recent 3-0 win, Adam Smith had a loan spell at Chessfield in the autumn of 2011 and was an unused sub in six games. Who was the keeper that was in the starting 11 for all those games? Tommy Lee, Richard O'Donnell, Greg Fleming or Oli Soderberg? So, who was the keeper in the side when Adam Smith was on loan with the Sparrights in the autumn of 2011? Either Tommy Lee, Richard O'Donnell, Greg Fleming or Oli Soderberg. Less than half the time now remains. There's a couple of people yet to answer. Dan and Johnny Wings. Just Johnny Wings then left. Make sure, Johnny, that you are right up to date on your stream. May well be that you're lagging behind and running out of time. The answer is Greg Fleming. Come into the team after Tommy Lee was injured against Berry. So C is what we're looking for. And only 15 getting the right. 21 going for Tommy Lee. So three, true or false, Frank Barlow didn't select any player to make their Chessfield Football League debut until his 34th league game in charge. Is that true or is that false? 
Frank Barlow didn't select any player to make their debut for the Sparrows in the Football League until his 34th league game in charge. It's true or false, A or B? And still just one to answer, Johnny Wings clearly has some connection issues. Everybody else has answered, so 56 who've logged in successfully and logged in their answer, and the answer is true. Paul Gregory came in as a keeper after John Turner was injured for the goalless draw at home to Fulham. So A is what we're looking for. And 42 getting that right. Which was the last season in which Chesterfield's first choice home kit featured white socks 0708, 0809, 0910 or 1011? The last season when the first choice home kit featured white socks 2007 8, 2008 9, 2009 10 or 2010 11. Two yet to answer. Big DBH has just answered. Johnny Wings yet to answer. Into the last 15 seconds. Everybody quick off the mark. The stream is performing well tonight, I'm glad to say. And the answer is B, 2008, 2009. So how many people put B? 18, but 22 going for... C, 2009-10. So we can actually see the kit in question. And that was it. On to question five. Chesterfield have played friendlies against a number of overseas sides. Which of these opponents did the Sparites beat? Anderlecht, Benfica, Saarbrücken or Malaga? So which of those did the Spirites beat? One of those... Overseas sides, Anderlecht, Benfica, Saarbrücken, or Malaga. And everybody bar Johnny Wings has answered. So only Johnny Wings having obvious connection issues tonight. As I say, just do check your YouTube stream that you're watching. Make sure that it's right to the end of the bar. You can drag that along. Otherwise, it could just be a problem with your internet. And the answer is Saarbrücken. 3 0 as part of the 1951 Festival of Britain. So, C. And only 15 getting that right. 26 going for Malaga. Let's take a look then at the leaderboard after five. And West Bar Spyrite, the early pace setter, ahead after the first one and still there, but just a fraction ahead of play on playoffs. And Kevin Wagg. Well in contention, just four points off the lead in third place. Then Ben Foster and Carefree. The Wag Rileys, Brockwell Sparrights 2, Singing the Blues, T392. The Sex Zig, Byrights in 10th. Uh, also franchise, as we call them, just outside the top 10. On to question 6. Next Monday sees four ex Spyrights featuring in an online question and answer session to raise money for the Spyrights Football for Life team. But which one of them made most appearances for Chesterfield? Look at the photo and say A, B, C or D. So which of that quartet made the most appearances for the Spyrites? I mentioned them before the quiz got underway. So we can recognise them anyway. Very recognisable characters. Good fun they are too. Looking forward to that next Monday. Less than half the time remains. Vladimir with his slow connection yet to answer. He's answered though now, but again, Johnny Wings, I think we can discount from the uh, action. Unable to log in an answer for some reason. And the answer is B. Tony Bryan, 204 league appearances. Chris Marples, Dave Caldwell, Steve Williams, the others. And as Phil reminds us, you can still book a place for the chat. So please do support that next Monday night. And 23 going for A, 19 getting it right with B, 7 for C, 8 for D.
So for which club did Gavin Gunning make his Football League debut? Is it Tranmere, Bury, Rotherham or Birmingham? Who did Gavin Gunning make his Football League debut with? Either Tranmere, Rovers, Bury, Rotherham United or Birmingham City? Sadly, I've been picking up an injury last night. We're waiting to find out the extent of that, but it didn't look good. As James Rowe admitted in the post-match press conference, we'll no doubt hear more. Friday's pre-match presser. A travel man yet to answer. And has answered to everybody who can answer, has now logged in their answer. And the answer is Tramia Rovers. That was at Yeovil in August 2009 while on loan from Blackburn. So A. And we have 26 who got that right. 18 going for Birmingham, 8 for Bury, 5 for the Millers. On to question 8. Which current Sparite has played a competitive game against a team featuring current PSG and former Real Madrid keeper Kaylor Navas? Was it Aquasi, Asante, Adi Youssef, Nathan Tyson or Fraser Kerr? So, who has played in that uh, level against a team featuring Navas? The former Real Madrid keeper, either Quasi Asante, Adi Youssef, Nathan Tyson, or Fraser Kerr. D392 just answered. Everybody who can answer has logged in their choice. As we're going to our last 10 seconds. And the answer is. Razor Kerr came on as a sub for Motherwell against Levant in the Europa League August 2021. Ex-Leicester player Vicente Abora also played for Levante. So D is what we're looking for. Only 11 get in there, at least popular answer. Nearly at halfway stage. Which of these Sparrows played in a game watched by 57,679 spectators in April 2017? Look at the photo and tell us A, B, C or D. And which of those played in front of over 57,000 spectators in April 2017? A, B, C, or D. Choice. And once again, everybody who can take part has answered in good time. Just run the clock down. And the answer is A. Martin Smith for Kilmarnock in a 3 1 loss at Celtic. So let's take a look. Only nine getting that right. So we go on to question 10. Which of these Sparrows has played football for a team based on an island that has an area of just 7.12 square miles? Adi Youssef, or is it uh, Joel Taylor, uh, Adam Prydbeck, or Tom Whelan? So, someone who's played on an island for a team based on an island with a an area of just 7.12 square miles. Adi Youssef, Joel Taylor, Adam Prisbeck, or Tom Whelan. And with around half the time remaining, everybody who's taking part has answered. So clearly no issues for people at the moment, apart from Johnny Wings, who's having one or two problems, clearly. The answer is Adam Prisbeck. So that's for Concord Rangers based on Canvey Island. James Rowe has played for the island's other team called, funnily enough, Canvey Island. So C is what we're looking for. 22 getting that right. So I'll we'll take a look at the leaderboard. West Bar Spyrite was the leader after five. Is he still there? He is. And his lead now is... 11 points over Brockwell Spyrites, Carefree in third, T392, fourth, uh, Singing the Blues, play on playoffs. Brockwell Spyrites 2, Cooperman, Kevin Wagg, and PK. 
That's your top 10. So now we're going to our Wheel of Fortune. If you're in the top 20, you'll be amongst those. And what we have tonight is, I think I can confidently say, I have the only signed program from last night, which features um, one of the players on the cover. For a moment, I'd, I'd just forgotten who it was. <laughs> but it was uh, it's Adi Youssef. Uh, and I managed to get him to sign the program. So... Uh, I think that might, might be the only one, the only signed Adi Yusuf Chesterfield program in existence in the world. So uh, we'll give that to whoever is picked out on the Wheel of Fortune. Good luck, everyone who's in the top 20. So, blowing down. Where's it going to land? And it lands on. PK, I believe that's Paul. So well done, Paul. You can confirm that it's you. Just drop me a, a message. So well done, you win that uh, program. Let's move on. Question 11, which current Spirit is featured in an international friendly against Algeria for whom Manchester United's Riyad Mahrez appeared? A quasi Asante, Milan Butterfield, Marcus Dinanga or Adi Yusa? So current Spirit who's played in an, in an international friendly against Algeria. Akwazi Asante, Milan Butterfield, Marcus Dinanga, or Adi Youssef. I just mentioned Adi, of course, signing that programme. And less than half the time remains. Only Mojo, who's just answered. Donny Wings, nearly out of contention now to play. Once again, running the clock down now that everybody's answered who can answer and the answer is Adi Youssef that was for Tanzania in an African Nations Cup match in Cairo July 2019 16 getting that right but 25 going for Milan Butterfield and 11 for Marcus Denanga 5 for Akwazi Asante in 12, which of these former Sparrows did the club loan to Norwegian club SK Sprint Jaloy? Look at the photo till as A, B, C, or D. So it's a former Sparrite who went out on loan to Norwegian club SK Sprint Jaloy. You recognize all those players? Can you tell us who it was who went to? Norway to play for SK Brintjeloy. Again, Johnny Wings, the lone figure who is unable clearly to answer. And the answer is B. Jacob Hazel, that was 2013. And Manny Diaz oh, I'm just just got the low battery signal on my laptop. Quickly plug it in before we lose power. Forgot to do that before we went on air. So uh, we're back with power. So uh, where was I? Yeah, so Cham and Toya and Jack Broadhead were also loaned out, but none of them ventured further than Oxford. So B is what we're looking for. 19 getting that right 23 going for c 12 for d so fair spread of answers there question 13 during the club's last season in the efl how many players did chessfield sign on loan 8 9 10 or 11. so the number of players signed on loan during chessfield's last season in the efl either 8 9 10 or or 11. Two people yet to answer. Including Singing the Blues. Everybody in, bar Johnny Wings. And the answer is. 
11. So there they are. Reed, Flores, uh, Keller, De Girolamo, Jules, Dawson, Eastwood, Nelson, Ramsdale, Motley, Henry, Brown. Beaten only by 12 in 2011-12. Another relegation season. And that tells its own story. So D is what we're looking for. 12 getting that right. 24 going for 10. 16 for 9 and 5 for 8. So once again a fair spread of answers. Question 14. What have these opponents of Chesterfield all got in common? Connor uh, McElhaney, Robbie Simpson, David Frio and Tony Ellis. have all been sent off against the Spirates, all made the league debuts against Spirates, all scored hat-tricks against Spirates, or all made their final league appearances against the Spirites. So what do they have in common? Players who played against the Spirites. Uh, Connor McElhaney. Robbie Simpson, David Frio, and Tony Ellis. They've either been all sent off, made their league debuts against the Sparrites, all scored hat tricks against the Sparrites, or all made their final league appearances against Chesterfield. So, Pilsy franchise taking his time, finally answering before we go into the final 10 seconds. And the answer is C. All scored hat tricks against the Spirites. That's for Oxford, Oldham, Plymouth, and Preston. So C. Here's the answer. Thirteen, getting that right. Seventeen, going for D. Fifteen for A. Twelve for B. So, uh, yeah, tricky to answer. Clearly, people struggling. With some of these uh, questions, very tricky. So on to 15. Which of these players made the most league appearances for Chesterfield? Look at the photos and tell us A, B, C or D. So who made the most league appearances out of those four for Chesterfield? I'm sure you can easily identify all four. But who made the most league appearances for the Sparrites from that quartet? A, B, C, or D. So into the last 10 seconds. And the answer is B, Ian Brecken, 279. 22nd in the all-time list, Andy Morris 266, Drew Talbot 266, including 8 in the National League, and Kevin Randall 258. So B, how many people put B? Only 4. Very interesting, the least popular answer. So let's see how things are shaping up. West Bar Spyrite has been doing well, setting the early pace ahead from the very first question. Is West Bar Spyrite still our leader? He isn't. He's been overtaken. Brockwell Spyrites is there. Kevin Wagg in contention in second. Westwell Spyrite dropping down to third. So 43 points off top, uh, top spot now. Reggie for POTY in fourth. Carefree then PK, the winner of the Wheel of Fortune, etc, etc. Take a quick look further down. See where we all are. It will be a very Quick look. Then we have at the bottom of the ones who can answer Dave Mid. And if he's opened that bottle of wine, is that to blame? Only 22 points. 16. Which of these former Sparrites who only ever appeared as a substitute uh, notched up the most minutes in EFL matches? For Chesterfield, Reese Brown, Miles Wright, Delisle Brewster, or Curtis Morrison. So they're all players who only ever appeared as substitutes, but who notched up the most minutes in EFL matches for the Spyrites are the Reese Brown, Miles Wright, Delisle Brewster, or Curtis Morrison. Less than half the time remains. The last 10 seconds. Remington Blues. Yet to answer. 
and Dunk 59. And so it's Delal Brewster, 60 minutes, Brown 52, Wright 48, Morrison 3, though he had 27 more minutes in a cup game. So C is the answer. And 18 people getting that right, but 26 going for Reese Brown. Question 17, Chesterfield-born Connor DeMeo scored two goals for the Sparrights in different games, but against the same opponent. Which one? Was it Rochdale, Berry, Fleetwood Town, or Crew Alexandra? The Connor DeMeo scored two goals, but uh, they were against the same opponent in different games. Was it Rochdale, Berry, Fleetwood, or Crew? As we approach the halfway mark in this question. Still a few people to answer. Singing the Blues, Dunk 59, PK, Brimington Blues. And be compressed as many times as you want. You can't change your answer, but just make sure you've got your answer in there. And the answer is Crew Alexandra. 3 1 league win at home and a 2 0 away win in the FL Trophy. So. Take a look. D. Yeah, 20 getting that right, but 19 going for Rochdale and 13 for Berry with 4 for Fleetwood. So again, very much spread out the answers there. The true or false, the player to score against Chesterfield in the Anglo-Scottish Cup Final once missed a penalty in the World Cup Finals. Is that true or is that false? So less than half the time remains, just Brimington Blues to answer whether Brimington Blues has had a connection issue because they seem to be struggling to answer. I'm running out. And the answer is true. Don Masson missed for Scotland against Peru in Argentina 1978. One of Jim Brown's old Scotland teammates, Don Masson. I've spoken to him about some of the players he was in the same squad as, and Don Masson gets a mention. He was reputed to have one of the hardest shots, I remember. Don Masson. So, A. And 32, getting that right. A false 24. So, let's take a look with just two questions left, as we do after 18. We take a look at the leaderboard. Brockwell Sparite still there. Nine points ahead of West Bar Sparite. So West Bar Sparite, a multiple champion coming back strongly after fading a little. But there, well in contention, only nine points off the lead. Kevin Wagg, also a contender, 19 points off the top. Play on playoffs. And number one Sparite, Brockwell Sparite's two, T392. Beachy, Ben Smith, and The Dart. That's your top 10. So the penultimate question of the evening. Which former Sparite scored for Panathinaikos against Volos in the Greek league earlier this month? Sadiq El Fitori, Bolly Ariibi, David Fopala, or Jay O'Shea? It was a former Sparite who scored for... Uh, Panet Alikos against Volos in the Greek League earlier this month, either Elfitori, Ariibi, Papala, or O'Shea. But Elfitori was still on the missing list. Could be wrong, could be the answer, not sure. Into the last 15 seconds. And the answer is Bolly Ariibi. So Bolly Ariibi with 24 getting that right. 20 going for Fapala, 10 for Elfitori, 3 for Geoche. So we go into the final question. It was very tight at the top, particularly between the top two. Brockwell Spyrites leading. 
after 18, but only nine points ahead of the multiple champion, West Bar Spyrite. Good luck, everyone, as we go into the final question of the evening. So which of these former Spyrites signed for a two times UEFA Cup winning and twice European Cup semi finals earlier this year are Armand Nonjoué, uh, Oli Soderberg, Angel Martinez, or Torsten Stuckman? So someone who signed for a two times UEFA Cup winning and twice European Cup semi finalists earlier this year. Armand Nonjoué, Oli Soderberg, Angel Martinez, or Torsten Stuckman? And less than half the time now remains. Few people yet to answer, including Vale Madness, Brimington Blues, PK, Dunk59, Brimington Blues appears to have connection issues, I think. I'm running out. And the answer is Oli Soderberg, signed for Gothenburg in January. How many people put B? Not many, seven, so that could be crucial. Armand garnering 29 votes, 10 apiece for Angel Martinez and Torsten Stuckman. So that could have made all the difference. So Brockwell Spyrites was ahead. West Bar Spyrite was in second and Kevin Wagg was in third. Let's take a look then at the top three at the finish. So tonight we see in third place, we have Kevin Wagg. So I think that means I got the last two wrong. I think it's on 281. After 18, tonight's runner up is West Bar Spyrite. So tonight's winner, we have Brockwell Spyrites. Congratulations to you, Brockwell Spyrites. Commiserations, West Bar Spyrite. Put up a good fight. Dropped away after leading for so long. I think some crucial wrong answers cost you there because you look to be heading for victory and Rockwell Spyrites was able to nip in and uh, triumph at the last. So let's take a look just outside the top three play on playoffs. Ben Smith, the Dart, number one Spyrite, Moss CFC, Brockwell Spyrites to Reggie for POTY. That's the top ten just outside Carefree. Keep going down there, Croydon Blue, T392, the Backheaders, last week's winner, Beachy, PK, Singing the Blues, Katie and Dan. I'll read everybody out, but to uh, just go through those to see if you can see yourself. Keenly contested as they often are, the quizzes. Some great questions, Phil. Very tricky one, so there's a real spread of answers for quite a few of them. Very difficult to work out. So, as we go towards the bottom there, Dave Mid, the last, in well, the last place of those who could take part. Johnny Wings clearly having issues. So, a reminder that tonight's winner will go into the draw at the end of the month. Win one of those prints, either of Saltergate or the Technique Stadium. So well done to Brockwell Spyrites. A couple of reminders then before we go. Uh, Spyrites Legends Reunion, please do get behind that and support it. Uh, should be a great night. Only £10 as well, and the money is going to the Community Trust Spyrites Football for Life mental health team. We need to get them some kit. So if you can support that, that would be very much appreciated. All the details are on the club website and social media channels. So only a tenner. And uh, I can promise you we will have a laugh. I was with the guys online on Monday night. And I'm really looking forward to it even more so after spending some time with them. Also, we'll be revealing the details of the football quiz, which is going to be... Um, a week on Thursday, and there will be uh, tickets there to, to be won, and I think a signed shirt I think we're going to get as well. So some prizes for a football quiz. All the details, again, will be on the club website. Then we've got the fun family quiz again on Sunday from 5 p.m. That was the print I was saying, one of the prints. We have both Saltergate 
and the Technic Stadium will look great framed. So it just remains for me to uh, congratulate for a final time Brockwell Sparites, tonight's winner of the Sparites quiz. Thanks again to Phil Tooley for his uh, valued efforts in putting the quiz together. And uh, I can now say that I didn't want to scupper things at the start, but much relief that this new lead that I have appears to have done the trick. Keep your fingers crossed <laughs> that uh, it's not a flash in the pan. As you know, we have had issues with one or two frozen moments, let's call them, when uh, it looked as though we were about to get the quiz underway, then the screen just froze and we were unable to do anything, so I narrowed it down to a lead which has come from overseas. It's been the first night we've used it, absolutely no problems at all. So let's uh, hope that uh, as that has solved that. So uh, great when uh, the quizzes go without a hitch and uh, much relief all round and makes it a pleasure for everyone. So thanks again for all the feedback from everyone as well. And just to uh, point out something as well that I should have said earlier perhaps, but uh, I'll mention it now before we go. Um, there is a survey that we're doing. There's a questionnaire on the website. We are asking all fans, not just season ticket holders, to fill in that questionnaire. It will just give us an idea uh, so that when we're planning for the return of spectators, it will uh, show us the type of uh, uh, matters that we have to consider, such as the number of people who want to uh, come along together. So whether it's two or three people together or individuals, it really will help. So you can fill that in online. If not, if you've got problems with uh, sorting that on your email, then you can phone the office during uh, office hours. And all the details, again, are on the club website. So your help and cooperation with that would be much appreciated. So thanks very much for your company tonight. I hope you can either join us on Sunday for the Fun Family Quiz or the Monday night Q&A with the four former Sparites. Or if not, we'll see you the same time next week, 8 o'clock on a Wednesday for the Sparites Quiz. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and uh, do take care. <laughs>